Well, I told you that we'd get right on the lathe project, and I don't intend to disappoint you. So what I have here is a knockoff of a Fender Precision Bass. It's made by a Korean company. Bought it when I was 18 years old for like 120 bucks. Uh, and then did this custom refinish with uh, the camo and stickers and stuff. Uh, fun bass. I love it to death. One thing I did, uh, I took the knobs off and never replaced them. So we're going to make some. Okay, so I basically just stripped uh, stripped the paint off of this guy and, and did just a rattle can paint job. It wasn't anything fancy, and I definitely wasn't doing it with a uh, probably the most professional attitude, but I had fun and I learned a lot. These shafts, they're called split shafts. Uh, you can see they have a small slit in the center of them. That means when we put the knob on, it's a, it's a pressure fit. These, these two wings created by the split will will bend in and therefore we don't have to drill into the side of the knob for a set screw. So that makes it a little bit easier. So instead of any sort of technically accurate blueprint, what I'm going to try to do here is just kind of scribble some notes as far as our basic measurements. There's only a couple of real critical measurements. Uh, the rest is just kind of an aesthetic. So we know that our internal bore that's going to be going around the actual shaft, it's going to be 0.235 inches in diameter, uh, that will basically equate to a 1564 drill bit when we get there. And it will be 0 0.280 inches in depth. We will have a recess uh, on the bottom of the knob to clear the hardware on the pit guard. And that will be half an inch, 0.500. Uh, and then the knob itself, my drawing's getting messy, will be 750 by 750. And I believe, it's a bit arbitrary, but I believe I'm just going to go with now my, my blueprint drawing skills are getting terrible. Uh, we'll just do a tenth of an inch. That's basically what we're looking at. It's, <laughs> hopefully it looks better than that. Uh, this is a very, very nice drawing, uh, very technical, uh, very representative of what it will look like, but a drawing of basically what the knob I plan on it looking like. If you don't already have it pictured in your mind, we're going to put that knurling tool to use. and Otherwise, it's just going to be a pretty straight cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one inch bar stock. This is just a 6061 uh, plain grade aluminum. We're going to go ahead and get it here in the chuck and the steady rest. I'm going to back off these, these are brass jaws. We'll do it in the chuck first and make sure it is turning, it's turning straight. Lock down our steady rest. Get those nice and softened up to it. Okay, that should provide us with enough solid, rigid working room right here. Next thing to do, we will go ahead and get our tool mounted in the tool post. And this is my high speed home turned uh, or home ground turning bit. What I want to do is mount it up here with the cutting edge just so. And get, I'm going to set the tool post at an angle for facing. First operation. Okay, we'll see how this angle works. Hopefully, we don't get too much splatter on the camera. So back up to about 550, 600. That is a nice 
Nice facing pass right there. Take off just a wee bit more. Okay, now we'll get set up for the turning pass. Okay, I'm going to turn my lead screw so that it is moving forward with that switch. Get that out of the way. Now we're right at 750. Okay, as you see here, I've got the knurling tool mounted in the tool post holder, or in the tool holder in the tool post. Um, I believe I've got it as reasonably true and on center uh, as I can figure, so we will just see. Uh, this will be my my second time using this so I'm going to turn it on it's already sort of touching the work but we're not we don't have very much pressure on it yet so I'm going to try it slow just to be sure and then we will try the power feed See if you can see that there. And it uh, looks like we're getting a pretty strong cut one way. Looks like we uh, it's going to be on this. Yeah, I think it's there on the top tools what's, what's, uh, what's doing that. But we are getting a good cut. That is a, that is a neat finish. So I'm going to try to adjust the tool a little bit, see if we can't, uh, can't fix that. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I have to come a little bit clean. I actually lost a good amount, probably 20 minutes of raw footage of me finishing up these knurls and then actually taking the parting pass. Uh, I'm really upset by this because I had two excellent parts uh, using the cutoff tool that I really, really, really wanted to show you. And uh, due to the fact that I'm kind of learning a new platform right now trying out iMovie on a Mac and using a, an iPhone to shoot uh, there's uh, there's a bit of a learning learning curve that I'm clearly a little behind on so anyway these are the two parts where they stand right now for the end of this video as you can see we got a great deep knurl on there uh, the facing on each of them is is nice and clean got a really great cut quality uh, this is these are the little tips left over from from the parting tool that's that's something that happens and we'll just uh, address those when we go to finish them up with the final facing to length uh one of them's about maybe oh i don't know just a few thousands longer than the other uh and then we'll we'll bore cut the recess and get them all finished up but uh so that's where we're at right now
And I'm sorry I couldn't have showed, shown you more of that, but uh, I am really proud how these are coming along so far.